Please recognize number one, Joshua Lightburn. I appreciate these players for Connor, for Kyle, for Joshua, who, by the way, we're not quite sure what Joshua's doing yet. Um, I think the biggest thing is just learning that I have my own journey and I have my own race to run. And a lot of times in life, I think you can kind of look at other people and you can begin to compare yourself. And I think it was Theodore Roosevelt that said, comparison is a thief of joy. Just realizing that I have my own race and that's okay. And I think the more that you get an understanding of that, the better you will be able to you know, walk in your destiny. That's what I would tell the younger Joshua Langford. <laughs> Nick, Miles, and Cassius Winston. Unbelievable class. Great opportunity to be a part of what they were calling the class as we came in. You know, it was, it, it was just fun, you know, coming in with those guys. Offensive rebound, though, and a lot of traffic by Nick Ward as all of the freshmen are in right now for Michigan State. And there's Langford knocking down the jumpers. How good is this freshman class? I think it's really good. We had a lot of success. I think the biggest thing that was kind of surprising to me is that we all scored a thousand points. You know, that whole group, me, Nick, Cash, and Miles, I think that speaks volumes to, you know, the kind of players, you know, that, that we are. You know, how well our coaches developed us and helped us, you know, become better over our time here. My two closest friends when I got here was Tum Tum Naren and Miles Bridges. Really, all of my teammates helped me a lot, but the two closest guys was, was Miles and Tom. And, you know, we kind of really stuck together. Coach has a saying, he said that we stuck together thicker than thieves. You know, we were always around each other. And I think just having them around um, just really helped me a lot. And I think that just speaks to life in general, how you just can't expect to get through anything in life without having good relationships. December 27, 2018. I uh, got the date pinned in my head, um, but it was kind of a lingering thing. You know, it didn't, it wasn't like an initial, like, you know, I took off wrong or I landed wrong. It wasn't that type of injury. It was just something that kind of progressed over time. And there you see the boots that Josh Langford is sporting had an MRI today. They will get the reading on that tomorrow. So for now, he is day to day, unclear on exactly what it is. And of course, they'll have more information here, but. As I found out it was a stress fracture, I ended up having to get surgery. Then I went through that recovery process. You know, that process, it wasn't an easy process. You have to just cut my chest open and look at my heart and really see, you know, the disappointment that I had. The way I was playing, the way I felt like things were gonna go for me and the team. We went to the final four that year. So it was definitely difficult for me um, just having to get through that season, especially that first year. You know, having to get through that, having to deal with that, it definitely was hard, but I had a lot of great people around me. But it's also leadership. And Joshua Langford is one of the, the, the leaders of this team. He's one of the best defenders. Five to shoot underneath to Tillman. What a I would have been cheating my teammates had I just checked out. Even though I wasn't playing on the court, I still was a part of the team. Our GA at the time, Chris Fowler, one thing that we had talked about was me just using this time to just find my voice and to really just try to be effective in the game and be effective for my teammates. Of course, that was uncomfortable for me because I had never been in that position before. You know, when you use your seasons of adversity with the right perspective, you can always get something out of it. That was kind of my mindset with it. You know, I just wanted to see what else I could do to not just better myself, but also better my teammates and my coaches. Everything that God allows is, is always something on the other end of it. And so I'm just taking it in stride and just making sure that I, you know, remain, you know, remain in my faith. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, basketball is, I mean, it's not who I am. It doesn't define me as a person. Where I get my identity is, is in Jesus Christ, so.
realized I had to get surgery again because it was fracturing a different way in my navicular bone. That one knocked the wind out of me. Just doing all that to get back, um, the rehab, uh, the different stretching, the, the uncomfortable uh, foam rolling, all these different things that, you know, that I'm thinking like, okay, you know, I'm putting in the time, you know, having my hands out and then somebody just coming and just knocking my hands down again. It was just devastating. I had gave all I got, you know, after that first one. I think that's when I kind of just checked out mentally. You can see the difference in years versus my, you know, my first year I was sitting at the front of the bench. Then my second year I was sitting at the end of the bench. You know, at first I still had hopes. And then once it happened again, you know, it just made my heart sick. It was just like, wow, you know, what else? What else am I gonna do? At that point, I kind of was thinking, you know, maybe basketball isn't in the cards for me anymore. You know, maybe I need to start focusing on trying to do other things. I was making a resume for different jobs. I actually applied for a teaching job. You know, it was just like, man, like, wow, you know, my dreams, it just looked like they had got taken away from me. And it was hard for me. It was really hard for me to, to get through that. He's one of those guys that everybody in the world pulls for. It doesn't matter if you're a Michigan State fan, everybody pulls for somebody who's been through a lot in his life. And you know, Josh at an early, early age had a little illness that uh, almost cost him his life. And I think that helped bring perspective to Josh. But since the day he came on this campus, he's been a worker, good student, great person on and off the court, incredible family. Uh, Joshua Langford's one of those guys you pull for. I think it's a array of things that, that I can attest to. Me being able to come back, I think, first and foremost was my relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, he really helped me get through it. Had I not have a relationship with him, I don't think he would see me right now. I think I'll be somewhere, you know, in an insane asylum or something like that, you know. Just because of how, how much pressure that was on me mentally, my relationship with people really helped me probably would have just quit on myself. It was almost like those people around me were pulling me through because I had pulled myself through as hard as I could. Pulling myself through as hard as I could didn't do anything for me. So it was just like the relationships I had were just dragging me and just, come on, Josh. Come on, keep going, you got it. And that's how I got through it. I didn't get through it by myself. To take something away that meant so much to him. He could have thrown in the towel, could have been, why me, feel sorry for me. And not only didn't he do that, but he actually worked harder on getting better. And so as a role model for my own kids, hopefully someday my grandkids, and definitely my team, Josh Langford has been everything I could ask of a player. First game that I got ready to play, in my mind I'm like, okay, I'm really about to get, it, get on this court and go play like, it's been two years. It was almost hard to believe because I had been used to two years sitting on the bench, coming out the tunnel, you know, in a boot or on a scooter. The process of even coming back, it hasn't been easy neither. It's been difficult. Having to get your timing back, having to get your rhythm back, you know, having to realize that, okay, my mind is telling me to do one thing, but my body isn't used to doing that. It's been challenging mentally. Lawyer, back to Hauser in the wing. Langford for a thousand. He got it. Wow. He got it. How about that? Walk into the club, the 52nd Spartan to do it. You know, when I leave Michigan State, I won't say that I was successful because I scored a thousand points. I was successful because I, I'm not the same person that I was when I came in. And I think that's the true definition of success. It's not about how many things you can accumulate, it's about how you becoming a better person. You know, how are you growing mentally? Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's will that will prevail. And what that verse means is that we have our plans, but God has his plans. Some things that you plan for yourself aren't actually as good as the plans that God has for you. You know, you use me as an example. It didn't necessarily look like things were going well for me because of what happened outwardly. But I would tell you that 
I wouldn't trade those things in for the world because I'm a better person. And I think when you have that mindset to life, you will thrive. You just won't be surviving. We have so much potential, but sometimes our plans are actually hindering our potential. I feel like I'm gonna leave here a man. Well, I came here with different expectations, you know, in terms of basketball. But at the end of the day, Michigan State has given me more than just the ability to shoot a jump shot better. They've given me principles and they've given me perspectives and given me a mindset that I can really apply to my life. It's meant everything to me.